Okay, uh, what good morning again what we are going to do today is uh, kind of build upon the last lecture when we found out that somehow this idea of drop size distribution, velocity distribution and if I may even say temperature distribution these are all now becoming relevant quantities. So, I need to get some mathematical framework in which I can talk of these distributions ok. So, we will see The whole idea of, of this framework is going to be that from knowing some information of all the drops that have that I have sampled thus far, okay, whether it is in a spatial sense or in a temporal sense, I have no idea what to expect from the next drop in a with a hundred percent surety. Okay. So, if I sampled half the frame in the spatial sense and I am about to step into the second half, I have some estimates, but I cannot be 100 percent sure what to expect of the next drop I am going to sample. This is the idea that this is not deterministic, but I need some sort of a statistical measure, because there is some sort of a stochasticity, there is some uncertainty. Okay. Now, we will probably about a third of the class later on, we will see what are the possible sources of this uncertainty, but for now we will just say look I do not know what the what the next drop is going to be. So, I need some statistical measures of these distributions. So, we are going to try and understand that those. Okay. And one of the fundamental concepts we need to understand is this idea of probability. Okay, we are going to go to high school probability for a moment and we will sort of try and see if we can build upon it. Okay. So, we will take our regular uh, six sided die. So, I have a six sided die, I roll it. and I get some I get an outcome. Okay. So, let us say I get these as my these are my outcomes. From these outcomes I can build a probability of the number which is the number of times 1 occurred divided by the total number or I will use subscripts to this is say fairly obvious. Okay. This is called a posteriori probability that is I only can build this after I have done all these trials, okay. but then you say that this die has not changed the floor on which I am rolling has not changed. So, this can also become my a priori probability for the next roll. So, I can use this information to predict statistically to predict what could be the outcome for the next roll. Okay. So, these are some simple high school concepts what we want to do is see. So, I have this probability of getting 1 2 dot dot dot. If I have a perfectly fair die I know that these are all going to be 1 sixth. If I have a loaded die and let us say if I have this die and this bottom part is all lead and this top part is all plastic. 
So, this is the case of a loaded die. Then I am more likely to get the number 4 from the die roll than other numbers. I could that does not mean I will not get the other numbers at all, I will get, but I am more likely to get the number 4. So, I can now write a probability of getting any number i, I want to use the subscript notation as a function of i. So, the probability of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, whatever there is some some probabilities associated with each of the 6 outcomes and the sum of all the probability has to be equal to 1 okay, that is our basic you know high school in uh, high school understanding of probabilities because there is no other outcome possible. Now, if I take this 6 sided die and I make it a 20 sided die, so I can create a, a 20 sided die and it is got 20 flat facets. So, every time I roll one flat facet comes up to the top. So, I have one of 20 outcomes possible and for every one of those if I do a sufficiently large number of die rolls, I can build an a posteriori probability from each of the different uh, sets of count on count of each of the outcomes right i can i can do this for 20 sided die can i do it for a 40 sided die sure i roll it one face is on top the only limitation i can go from 6 to 8 10 20 40 100 i can keep going as long as i don't get into the point where there are an infinitely many outcomes. So, as long as I have somehow countably many outcomes from this die roll, this theory works. So, if I say that there is only 1, 2, 3, 4 to 20,000, those are the integer outcomes possible in this experiment, in this trial. I can do, if there are 20,000 outcomes, I have to do a very large number of trials, but I can build this with some patience I can build this probabilities of each of the outcomes right. But if there are infinitely many outcomes ok. Now, I want to talk of a case where there are infinitely many outcomes what does this mean. So, this works first of all what do I mean by infinitely many. So, this works this theory works. Okay. I want to understand what the, uh, so what happens if this is violated? Because if I have an infinitely many outcomes, the probability of any one outcome is nearly 0. Okay, we will take a simple example. Of such an outcome case, I okay, will take a hoop. So, instead of instead of a die roll like we saw we are going to now roll a hoop, a hoop is a round bangle kind of thing. So, I am going to mark it just like the dial on a clock. Okay. So, I am going to say this is 12 o'clock, this is 3 o'clock, this is 6 o'clock and that is 9 o'clock. Okay, this is a hoop
okay, I am going to roll this on a floor where the floor is soft. Okay, I need to. So, in other words, if I roll a bangle, it will never come to a rest as long as the floor is floor does not provide enough friction. Okay, just a simple uh, understanding of how to I need the roll to stop for me to count the outcome. Okay. So, I roll this hoop and it comes to rest. So, let us say I am very lucky the very first outcome is where 12 o'clock is on top okay. and just for the sake of argument I will mark that as my 0 degrees and count an angle phi going 0 to 2 pi. So, my outcomes are I'm, my outcome is the point on top. Okay, that is my that is what I call the result of this trial. So, I roll this and let us say if the number 3 was exactly on top then my outcome is pi by 2. Okay. We will first just draw upon our intuition briefly before going into the theoretical aspects. If I roll this hoop 10 times, okay, I do not know the initial condition, I am just sort of randomly rolling it just like I did I do with a die. What is the chance that any two numbers in this would be exactly the same, exactly the same? It is almost 0. Okay. I only have to say almost 0 because I can never say 0. But I do know I have an infinitely many outcomes because all the real numbers between 0 and 2 pi are possible choices of outcome and between any two integers there are a set of real numbers in this case between the, the real number 0 and the real number 2 pi there are an infinity, infinite, infinite number of real numbers. So, I am now I have to somehow construct this same a posteriori probability for this hoop. Okay, so, let us say this bottom part of the hoop has got some lead in it. So, this bottom part is lead and the top part is plastic just like before. So, I have created a biased hoop. So, I will now go back. biased hoop roll. So, every time I roll if I know that the bottom part is got lead then I know what to expect. See, but the idea of using statistical descriptions is that I do actually do not know what part of the hoop has lead through my trials I want to understand that. Okay. So, if I do this I can sit and count numbers coming out from my outcomes they will all be real numbers irrational some rational a few rational many irrational I have to if I have a way of actually counting the angular position I will get as many numbers as as I as the trials I do and chance of any two numbers being the same in a finite set is almost 0. So, how do I construct my a posteriori probability or for that matter some information about what the hoop is made of ultimately that is what we are after. Okay. So, what do I do here? So, I create this list and then I have to go to this histograms. So, I am going to say instead of assuming that every individual real number outcome is the same I am going to go through a process called binning. So, I am going to now say all outcomes 
from 0 to 30 degrees are alike. So, I am going to not distinguish between 29.9 and even 13, I am going to put all of them in one bin. Now, I can do a count because even if two outcomes are not exactly the same, since I have sort of created this equal this similarity between outcomes, I can put them in the same bin. Moment I put them in the same bin, they are all the same, I just need a count. Okay. So, this process I can uh, they are alike. So, once I do this, I create this bin in the in this outcome. So, now I have a I only have 12 bins the way I have done this the last bin is 330 this is my last bin. So, I have 1, 2, 3. So, I have taken a hoop and created a 12 sided die that is essentially what I have done. Okay. I can now go back to my old theory and find the probability of bin 1, probability of bin 2 dot 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 create the same histogram just like I did with the 6 sided die. Okay. Now, remember that these divisions are entirely artificial, the hoop does not have any distinguishing feature between 29.9 and 30.1, correct but I have created that distinguishing feature by putting this line at 30 degrees. So, I have an obligation to check if this distinguishing feature that I have put in there has a consequence. So, in other words if I do this and I find the probability of 1, probability of 2 dot 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 probability of 12. If I recreate a different set of probabilities following a different binning sequence so, this is I will say binning sequence 1. If I do it following a different way where my this will be the 36th bin right, but this is the 35th or 36th, I think it is the 36th. So, essentially I have now a P 1, P 2, I will call these primes just to distinguish between the other ones. I have these 36 P primes, it is the same exact data set. So, let us say I sat did this die roll 20,000 times the my, my biased hoop roll 20,000 times and I got 20,000 real numbers and I did binning in one way in the first part, binning in another way in the second part the histograms will look completely different right, but clearly it is the same data set I have to convey the same statistical information in both how do I do this. Okay. In order to make an equivalence between these two, I have to define what is called a probability density. So, if I take this probability density say for example, in the first case of in the first binning example, I take 
three of these bins here I will write down the third one also just to three bins in case two map to one bin in case one. So, all the count that goes into three individual bins in, in this case two map to only one bin in case one. So, I can clearly say that the count in the three bins for 0 to 10, 10 to 20 and 20 to 30 each one individually will surely be less than the count in the 0 to 30, which also leads us to sort of an intuition that the wider I take the bin the more count I am going to capture in that bin, the narrower I make the bin the less count I am going to capture in that bin. So, if I did this 0 to 1, 1 to 2 degrees the count in each bin for the same set of trials would be smaller. Okay. So, I have to have some way of finding not the probability or going beyond probability and finding a probability density around a given value. Okay. So, if I take if p i is the probability of the ith bin probability of finding an outcome in the ith bin. Okay. I can now define another f i which is given by this p i divided by delta x i. So, if I take all the range of outcomes say 0 to 360 degrees or 2 pi, if I take one value x and if I take all the outcomes in a bin that is delta x wide around that so this is the probability of finding an outcome in this delta x width okay, i'll call this p of x because i now depending on the value of x i choose the probability could be different because that's my idea of a biased hoop if x is closer to the 12 o'clock position p of x is going to be higher. Okay. So, if I take this p of x uh, as the probability of finding a drop in a bin that is width delta x around the value x. So, p of x So, uh, just to finish the discussion here f of i is what we will call is what leads us to the idea of a probability density. So, rigorously we will define we will we'll talk of what it is p of x is the probability Okay, f of x is not equal to p of x divided by delta x, but really speaking it is the limit. So, I will rewrite that okay. 
So, as I come closer and closer and closer to that point x, the value of the probability of finding an outcome in x minus delta x by 2 to x plus delta x by 2 becomes smaller and smaller actual probability and the width itself is becoming smaller, but the limit is a finite uh, value that limit is what we will define as our probability density. So, the idea you have to sort of understand this idea of density it is like I know the probability of any one number is 0, but how dense is the outcome is the outcome distribution around that point that is all I care about. So, if I so if I go back to this f of x now f of x has units of probability has no units this is a point that you have to understand f of x has units which is the same as per radian or per degree. You look at what is in the denominator I should I should not say delta x with a it has units of x basically in the denominator. So, for the case of a biased hoop roll the probability density has units of per radian or per degree depending on what we choose to plot as the independent coordinate. So, per degree this is the uh, this is the density of outcomes possible. So, let us find some simple argument. So, if I say I will rewrite what I wrote here I will rewrite this statement in a more correct way. If f of x is a PDF, then f of x times dx is the probability of finding an outcome x plus dx. Okay, so, in an infinitesimal neighborhood around the value x or near the value x you look at how many outcomes or what is the probability of outcomes that you have. So, essentially let us draw this in a graphical sense So, if I have f of x is now a function ok. So, I have defined a probability density function So, I can draw a graph of it something like that let us just say then at, at some value x going from x to x plus d x f of x d x f of x is the value at that point f of x d x is essentially the area of that infinitesimal strip. that infinitesimal strip the area of that infinitesimal strip is the probability of finding a uh, probability density a probability of finding a value in the limit x to x plus d x in the range x to x plus d x. <coughs> Likewise, you can see that the probability of the same width here would be higher. So, if I take all the range of values of my hoop going 0 to 360 degrees 
the idea that no other outcome is possible other than values between 0 to 2 pi or 0 to 360 tells me that integral 0 to 2 pi f of x dx sorry whatever is my probability density function f of x, f of x dx is a probability in a thin strip and that integral of that f of x, the, uh, the summation over all the areas of these thin strips which is what we call integral going from 0 to 2 pi has to be equal to 1 that tells me that is just simply coming from the criteria that no other outcome is possible other than values between 0 to 2 pi. Okay. So, let us see how we can use this and let us apply this information to first let us continue our hoop discussion and we will finish it. So, let us say I know it is a biased hoop ar around 12 o'clock I am seeing like more values come up near 12 o'clock. So, I postulate a model. Okay, so, I have not yet done all these experiments I have done like 10 experiments found that 12 o'clock is coming up or points near 12 o'clock is coming up more often than the points near 6 o'clock I, I jump to a model. Okay. So, I say f of x is of the form 2 plus cos x. So, if you go back look at our definition of what uh, uh, I want to define a model for phi not x sorry. Where did I come up with this function 2 plus cosine phi? That is because if I draw the graph of 2 plus cosine phi, I instead of using this f, I am going to use this function, I will call this function g just for the sake of differentiating it from f, which I will use later on. this would be the graph of 2 plus cosine phi. So, at least graphically it captures the idea that phi values near 0 which is also the same as near 2 pi are more probable than phi values near pi. it sort of graphically captures that information and I am happy to start with this model. Okay, what do I know from here on is g of phi a probability density function? No, not yet all I have done is sort of postulated a function that seems to capture my imagination that in itself does not make it a probability density function. You need to make sure that integral g of phi d phi gives you the area under the curve. So, if I do this for this case The integral of cosine uh, phi is sine, but the limits are 0 to 2 pi. So, that becomes 0. So, the value of this integral is 4 pi. So, the area under the curve g the way I have drawn it is 4 pi. So, if I now define 
a new function f of phi equals 1 over 4 pi Now, this is a PDF, this qualifies to be called a probability density function, because the area under the curve in the range of values expected is actually equal to 1. So, if I create a plot of this, the value of this is 2 over 4 pi and that would be So, the value in the previous case also would be 3 for a maximum value for, for, for g right. So, same here would be it would go from a maximum probability density the maximum probability density is 3 by 4 pi and the minimum probability density is 1 by 4 pi. Okay, this is the case of a biased hoop. So, if I had a perfectly fair hoop where all outcomes are possible, you can see that the area under that curve would have to be equal to. So, area of the curve going from 0 to 2 pi of some constant value has to be equal to 1. For that to be the case, the constant this would have to have a value 1 over I am sorry 2 over 2 pi 2 over 4 pi or 1 over 2 pi I want to write it as 2 over 4 pi or 1 over 2 pi. Okay, so, this idea of a probability density of the unbiased hoop is also a number you know just like a probability of an unbiased uh, die is a number like probability of any outcome is 1 by 1 by 1 over 6 probability density is also is a function probability density function but the function takes on a constant value equal to 1 over 2 pi okay so if i know so i started to reconstruct this from some model like i said you know i have this model of a biased hoop that is biased towards the 12 o'clock comparison in comparison to the 6 o'clock and this is where I ended up. If I want to start with just simply going through the process of doing multiple trials and then reconstructing these probabilities, what do I do? If I take to the experimental route and say I have done this trial like 30,000, 20,000 times a large number of times I have rolled this hoop over and over and over again noted the real number that showed up on top. Okay. So, if I take that list of real numbers go through the binning process and create an f of 
x i. So, the first thing is to take is to using the old terminology find a g i which is equal to p i divided by delta x i. So, I take all the outcomes find the set of outcomes that fall in a certain bin x i to x i plus delta x i. This is just the count. So, this is n i, n i is the number of outcomes I want you to also note one difference between what I have just written and the very first version that I wrote of this divided by delta x thing, where delta x itself can have a subscript i. In other words, I can now have the ith bin here b of 1 delta x and the x i x j to x j plus delta x j. can be a different width. So, I now have a count n j associated with that jth bin. So, I am not restricted to somehow delta x being uniformly spaced delta x being equal for all the values uh, in, in this binning process. I can choose whatever bins I want and I can place the outcomes into these bins uh, depending on the actual value of the outcome. Once I do this n i divided by the total number which is essentially sigma n i gives me this number p i. So, p i is the probability of outcome in the ith bin. If I now define an f i which is equal to this p i divided by delta x i, this automatically gives me a p d f of x i, p d f at x i. So, it is like a it is the value of the function at x i. So, if I had a model see the problem with experiments is I only can compute these at discrete points of x I can do this at some at, at value 0 degrees 30 degrees 60 degrees etcetera. So, I take all the values in the range between let us say uh, 60 and 61 put them in the bin and then find the probability of values in the range 60 to 61 that gives me a, a, a and divided by that 1 degree that gives me a probability density. Okay. Now, so if I do this and I plot these functional these values f of f i and x i. So, I will do this for the for the case of a die where I, I am plotting this going 0 to 2 pi. Let us say if I do this with uh, 9 different bins this is these are the 9 values I get. These are the actual values of f of i at each value of x i. So, at each value of phi i so this is phi axis at this value of phi i this is the value of f i. Okay. How do I know that this is a PDF? Remember our condition that 
for probability density the area under the curve has to be equal to 1 because we ensured by this definition of probability that the probabilities will add up to 1 the p i is nothing but f i delta x i which is like the area of the strip around x i that is of width delta x i. So, in a in the sense of a numerical integration we have we have approximated the area to be equal to 1 as far as that uh, as far within the accuracy of the binning. So, the smaller the delta x i values the more accurately this number approaches the real probability density value. Okay. So, if I use if I get these x s through some bin 1 remember our using 30 degree increments or some using 30 degree increments I get these x symbols. If I do the same thing with the bin 2 which is 10 degree and if I do that and plot circles my expectation is that the circles would fall something like that. So, I have developed a better approximation of the actual function f of phi by taking finer bins and as I go towards finer and finer increments of these bins I recover a better and better approximation of the actual analytical function, but that that point once I reach this point I need a I need to do a model I need to find a model. So, like fit a, an equation or find a, a, a model from some dynamics and then come see how this data fits it, but our idea of PDF can be approached from both performing several trials and coming to a point where you can reconstruct this graph. This graph which does not depend on this is the key thing remember that was the point that was the problem we tried to solve. We had uh, two different binning sequences that gave us two completely different set of probability numbers. How do I reconcile the two by essentially figuring out this idea of probability density and if you can plot the probability density at a given phi location phi i which is f i whether you do it in one binning fashion or another binning fashion would only lead you towards the same answer. So, if I did this in 1 degree increments just for the sake of argument if I did this in 1 degree increments, but took 1 degree on either side of my chosen value of phi i. So, I go from 0.5 degrees to 1.5 degrees as the phi i for f i to compute f i at 1 degree and 1.5 to 2.5 etcetera etcetera or whether I do it in 1 degree increments going 0 to 1, 1 to 2 etcetera they will give me exactly identically the exa almost similarly the same answer. In other words the bin width is the only parameter that determines how closely converged I am to the real value of the real probability density function. This is going starting with trials and trying to recover an analytical function if there is in a, uh, as though I have done an infinite number of bins okay, that is the delta x tending to 0. So, if I say take 30 degrees take the probability from of finding an outcome from 25 to 35, 27 to 33, 29 to 31 and then come to smaller and smaller compute f of i's this will converge to one value at that point if I have a sufficiently large number of trials to start with that is the only problem. Okay. All right, let us quickly recap what we, what, what we have done. We started with the idea of probability 
which is usually only valid for integer outcomes and then develop this concept of probability density which could be extended to real outcomes. So, if I go back to the spray are my drops on an integer axis or a real axis if I ask the question clearly the answer is I, I certainly not on integer axis which means I only have to assume that there are an infinitely many outcomes therefore, we have to go to PDFs. therefore, we need to understand this basic mathematical framework. Okay. Thank you.